My name is Emmanuel Guillot. I'm deputy director of the Promes Inres uh, Laboratory, and I'm in charge of the solar facilities of the laboratory. So the big solar furnace you can see behind you, but we also have 12 smaller solar furnaces, a small trough, a dish, and we also operate five kilometers from here. Uh, the first solar tower uh, in France and one of the first on Earth, which is called Temis, and uh, which was used to produce electricity 40 years ago. So what you have behind me is the big solar furnace uh, from uh, Inodeo. A solar furnace has two optical functions. One is first to collect the solar energy. So those are the heliostats, which move during the day to collects the, uh, the energy from the sun which is moving. Then each heliostat, which, had, which is flat mirrors, sends the energy toward the parabola and the parabola does the second optical functions, which is to concentrate the solar energy on a single point. At this point, we have a lot of energy, so here one megawatt, up to one megawatt, and as we concentrate up to 10,000 times the solar energy, we can reach very high temperature, up to 3,500 degrees C, depending on what we are doing. In the laboratory, with our solar furnace, we are using direct solar energy. So that's the energy which makes shadow. If there is no shadow, our mirrors doesn't work, and our mirrors don't work and cannot reflect solar energy. So uh, the colleagues uh, 80 years ago chose the two sunniest places uh, in France. The solar furnace in Odeo is the largest operating in, on, uh, on Earth. One of the usage of the heat we have on uh, once we have concentrated the solar energy, so with the solar furnace, with the solar tower, with solar trough, with uh, some optics from one kind or another. With this heat, we can do chemistry at high temperature. One of the applications, which is again in fashion today, is to produce hydrocarbon fuels, so for example, kerosene for the aircraft. To do this, we use wood, chipped wood from trees, from uh, uh, forests. We use uh, water. With the wood and the water, thanks to the heat from the sun, from the concentrated sun, we can do uh, different reactions, such as the fischer trop reactions, with different steps allow to produce kerosene, gasoline for cars eventually, or more interestingly, for aircraft to make them sustainable. Concentrated solar energy in France in the whole story, we have not invented it. This is, at least, uh, it was known by the Romans, so 2,300 years ago, by Archimedes. Uh, however, we have been working with it since really the 14th, so about 400 years ago, and in the recent time, in the scientific times, uh, we are the one, Felix Rom and his colleagues, are the one who put it back in interest in fashion for the rest of the world in Paris in 47. We have operated this facility since 69, and it has been a um, leading example, a pioneer, as a, one of the pioneer uh, equipment on Earth, both for material science and as a solar energy to work on using solar energy as heat for industry, to, for chemistry, and obviously to produce electricity. Concentrated solar energy is not the solution, but is part of the solution to mitigate climate change, as it is a dispatchable source of energy, because we can store it very easily and use it whenever we want, not when the sun is shining, but when we need it. This is a very convenient uh, set of technologies. The energy agency from the UN is thinking that this kind of technology, both for electricity, for heat, for chemistry, could represent between 10 to 30 percent of the used energy on Earth in 2050, 2100.